come now is the time to worship come now is the time to give your heart come just as you are to worship come just as you are before your confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship, come just as you are before your God, come, come, come. be with you. Good morning. Welcome back to 830. Yeah? Who's, so a couple of you have said, so I see some clapping, but a couple of you have said, wow, I really had gotten used to 930. So welcome back to 830. Friends, this is our first day of the new blended service, which will be a little more music, a little less liturgy, and we invite you to please be in understanding that it is a work in progress. And I participated in a funeral on Friday where the lead pastor uh, said to us before the beginning of the service, we are about to worship and worship cannot go wrong. So we're living into that today as we do this new blended service and we feel our way through it and we look forward to having it be wonderful uh, today and as time goes on. And now I want to turn it over to our new director of music, Mr. David Hoover, and we'll more properly introduce him in a few minutes. But David, welcome. Thank you. Would you stand? Stand as Abel and let's continue to worship the Lord this morning. Maybe a new song to you, but it's fairly easy to pick up. Here I am to worship. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor. Here I am to worship. 
worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. And I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. Here I am to worship here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, wonderful to me. continue to worship this morning or worship the King. be seated. We're going to try something new. If you were here on New Year's Day, we did this, and it is singing a, a hymn and prayers in between each stanza. So I want to invite you to posture yourself in a way of prayer that is comfortable for you. Very often that means both feet on the floor, maybe hands out in your lap, but whatever is comfortable for you, be positioned to 
hear God and feel God's presence as we pray. And we will be singing, uh, the words will be on the screen, we're singing Spirit of God Descend Upon My Heart, which is familiar to many of you, I'm sure. And we will begin singing and pray in between each stanza. So let us sing. We believe in you, O oh God, for you have made the suffering of humanity your suffering. You have established your kingdom and put your spirit in our hearts. Today we sing to you because you are alive. You have saved us and made us free, and we adore you. we confess that we have left things undone and we have done things that we should not have done forgive us and fit us for service in your kingdom here on earth as we pray for your full kingdom to come We give you thanks this day for your grace and your mercy, for your steadfast love and for all the blessings that you pour upon us. We thank you that you hear our prayers and that you feed our souls. And Lord, we thank you. Thank you that you never leave us nor forsake us. Teach me to love thee as thine angels love. One holy passion filling all my frame. The kindling of the heavenly my heart and altar 
We pray your blessings upon this, your church, that all its members may dwell together in unity and love. Keep far from us all self-will and discord. Enable us through your righteousness to faithfully fulfill our ministries and to use your means of grace that in all our words and all our deeds we may seek your glory and the advancement of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. How's everybody doing this morning? Yeah, good. That's great. Uh, I got a couple of announcements. Um, first and foremost, I want to introduce David Hoover. And you already can hear what a beautiful voice he has, right? And we are so excited about his leadership. And uh, he'll be leading the choir and the bells and the children in K-5. And in the cornerstone, there is a picture of David and Victoria, his wife, who is joining the choir, right? Yes, she's joining the choir. So she'll be in the 11 o'clock service. And um, they are are new to our church family and very excited about being in our church family. And David has a long history of church music, sacred music. His experience is just going to be such a blessing to us. So how about a warm Wesleyan Chapel welcome? Yeah. Uh, speaking of K5 Live, it starts this week, and I noticed this morning as I was walking through Lee Hall, and when you go over for breakfast after this service, you'll notice too that a new tree grew in there over the last few days. And so we have one tree from last semester filled with beautiful pictures from all the activities and, and worship that went on at K5, and I can't wait to see this new tree grow and prosper as K5 goes along. So if you have children or grandchildren that you uh, want to sign up, there is an opportunity in the bulletin, I think, for you to, there's a QR code in the bulletin. You can click that or you can um, go to the website or you can call the church office. Any, any means will work. Um, let's see, I mentioned breakfast afterwards. Also today, for um, we're saying that this is for parents of children and youth are getting together in room two, which is near the administrative offices, to talk about the formation of a new Sunday morning fellowship group. It may be um, a breakfast club, it may be a Sunday school class, it will be a learning and fellowship opportunity, but please, if you're interested, um, you can attend that this morning to have a brainstorming session. Also, um, we have two wonderful adult Sunday school classes. If you're not already engaged in Sunday school, I would encourage you to visit either the chapel where Mary Ann Nunley is the teacher, or in the conference room in Lee Hall, where I believe your teachers are rotated. Am I right about that? I'm looking at you, Eric, rotating teachers there. And uh, both of those are really wonderful, fulfilling classes. So I hope you'll check out Sunday School. And now that we have this worship time, worship, Sunday School worship, and breakfast, that you'll be able to participate in uh, all three, breakfast, worship, and Sunday School. I believe that is all the announcements that I have. Please look at those that are in your bulletin. And so if you would, please rise as you're able and share the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of Christ be with you.
as you come back together, let's continue to sing to the Lord this morning. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord of the earth, let us sing power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have. In shout to the Lord, all the earth let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Sorry. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Please be seated. Amen. Let us now return to God a portion of the many blessings that we have received from his hand. Would our ushers come forward?
Let us pray. God of the water that cleans us, God of the land that feeds us, and God of the air that allows us to breathe your spirit in and out of us, you claim us in our baptism as we present our tithes and offerings this morning as a worship and witness to Christ's baptism once again. May we remember that in the water, we, like Christ, were commissioned to go, to teach, preach, heal, and even take up a cross. For in his name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Today's Baptism of the Lord Sunday. So, I always ask the age-old question, why did Jesus need to be baptized? Well, I don't think Jesus needed to be baptized. So why was Jesus baptized? We are about to read scripture from Matthew 3, verses 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Did I have an Acts scripture up there too? Let's go back and read that. My fault. <laughs> it was supposed to be read first. Acts 10, 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testi testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So... John the Baptist was offering a baptism of repentance. But Jesus wasn't a sinner. Why would Jesus agree to that? What does it mean that Jesus said, we're going to do this to fulfill all righteousness? Here's a couple of things that I think we know about the baptism of Jesus. First... God revealed the identity of Jesus for all to hear. The booming voice from heaven, This is my Son, the Beloved. This is my Son, in whom I'm well pleased. This is my Son, whom I 
love we read in the Gospels. The descent of the Spirit upon Jesus and God's voice from heaven gave testimony to affirm God's, uh, Jesus' core identity as the Son of God. And everybody in hearing distance heard it. Secondly, the baptism of Jesus initiated his ministry on earth. It was the starting point of his ministry, just like it's the starting point for us in our calls to ministry. When we are baptized, we are initiated into the kingdom of God. And here in his baptism, Jesus is beginning the ministry of the kingdom of God. At his birth, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven was ushered into earth, ushered on to earth. And one day we know that heaven and earth will become the fully realized kingdom of God. But Jesus was initiating his ministry. And later when Jesus sends out the disciples, he tells them to proclaim the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Third, the baptism of Jesus instituted baptism for us all. Jesus instituted it for his disciples then and now and forever. So we keep baptizing. We have a beautiful new baby in our congregation who I visited last week. And I am so excited that she will be baptized in, in the coming couple of months. We're very, very excited about that. What a gift it is to the body of Christ. What a gift it is to the family and to the child. And we keep baptizing and we remember the great commission from Matthew. Go and make disciples of all nations. It's easy to quote that part. But we remember the next part, I hope. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them all that I have commanded you. Finally, the baptism of Jesus was for us. He bore our sin. It is about what God does for us. This was Jesus in those waters, being baptized by John, taking on our burden of sin. It was the very beginning of Jesus taking on our sin, which culminated in his ultimate sacrifice on the cross. The purpose? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. This was how Jesus gave himself to us. That's why we call baptism a sacrament. After Jesus gave the Great Commission to the disciples, he then said, Remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. And we remember that Jesus is always with us. So what does baptism mean for us? Here's a snapshot. Let's unpack it a little bit. Baptism is about what God does for us, not what we do. God tells us in our waters of baptism that we are Beloved, and God reminds us that God will be our God. God welcomes us, and the church welcomes us into the body of Christ. And God pours out God's Holy Spirit upon us. God pours out grace, redeeming grace that we can't earn. We can't do it for ourselves. Because baptism is about what God does for us. And it's a one-time event. Once we've been baptized, we don't need to be baptized again. Because it is about what God does for us. But that doesn't mean that we don't need to remember our baptisms often. I think of baptism when I turn on the kitchen faucet. You know, have you ever turned on the faucet in the kitchen or, 
or, or in your powder room and just think about the water of baptism and say, Lord, I remember my baptism and I am grateful for what you have done for me. You know, even when we stray from our faith, even when our faith feels like it is being trumped by doubt, God remembers the covenant God makes with us in baptism. God remembers our baptism even when we don't. Because if you were baptized as an infant, I was baptized when I was like three months old, four months old. I do not remember my baptism, but God does. I know God remembers my baptism. Baptism is foundational for forgiveness. At the very heart of our Christian faith is the realization that we are a sinful people. That's the one thing John Wesley and John Calvin agreed on, is that without God, we live in a state of total depravity. And our baptisms wash us from original sin, the sin that we are simply born into, and the forgiveness we need throughout our lives flows from those waters of baptism. It's rooted there in our baptisms. It is rooted there in the ultimate sacrament of Jesus Christ. Our forgiveness over and over is rooted in our baptism because God proclaims to us in baptism, you're mine. I have called you by name and you are mine. I am claiming you and naming you to be in the family of God. Baptism also initiates us into the body of Christ, initiates us into the church, and marks us for discipleship. Barbara Brown Taylor, who is an Episcopal priest and author, uh, wrote in her book, The Preaching Life, that baptism at any age and by any means is the one true turning point in a person's life when he or she joins the ranks of the body of Christ, when we join the family of God. It is our call to ministry when we are initiated into the body of Christ. Do you know we all have a call to ministry? You know that, right? I used to go to this luncheon when I lived in Greenville, and I was a lay person at the time, and there would be a couple hundred people, and it was a faith in the workplace kind of luncheon, and the leader would say, how many ministers are here? And the preachers would raise their hands, and then he would back up and say, how many ministers are here? And everybody had to raise their hand because we are all ministers. We are all called to be ministers. John Wesley called baptism an instituted means of grace because Jesus instituted it and told us to continue it. So baptism is a means of grace. Redeeming grace by the ordinary element of water. God pours out the grace that follows us for a lifetime. This morning when we are coming up to the font, uh, David is going to be singing one of my very favorite baptism songs that was my request, so thank you, called I Have Heard Your Borning Cry. And it's the story of God being with us throughout our whole lives and the importance of our baptisms making us a part of God's family. God pours out grace that follows us for a lifetime. Just like bread and juice are the ordinary elements that impart grace to us in the sacrament of Holy Communion, it is the element of water, which we 
with all of our first world problems, take for granted, don't we? When we turn the faucet on, we assume it's going to be there. If we turn it to H, we assume it's going to get warm. Ordinary, a big part of our lives. We drink it. We bathe in it. We wash our dogs in it. Water. We can't live without it. And we should remember that because of our baptism, that's the number one reason that we can't live without it. It washes away our sin as a means of grace through which God pours out God's Holy Spirit. And we need to be reminded of that. We need to be reminded about being washed clean over and over again. We need to be reminded that God has been faithful to our baptismal covenant, never failing us, never forsaking us, even when we disappoint God in our sinful ways. And when we repent and we turn our eyes to God, we are reminded of God's faithfulness to us. And we are reminded that we are disciples. We are a sent people. Sent to share the love of Christ with the world. We are going to go through the liturgy of remembering our baptisms. And as we do that, I want to encourage you to listen with your ears and with your heart to what God would say to you. And if you are, if you have not been baptized, then I invite you to think about the words that have just been proclaimed and what that means, what it could mean. And when we come forward to the font, if you have not been baptized, please come forward and see Pastor Rick or me for a blessing. We'd love to pray a blessing over you. But I want to invite you, we are going to have, have it on the screen, um, but we will turn to uh, page 50 in the hymnal. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift, offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ Holy Church. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in His grace and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. And would you please stand as you are able. 
Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. And when you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all people. Pour out your Holy Spirit and by this gift of water call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sins and you clothe us with righteousness throughout our lives that dying and rising with Christ we may share in his final victory. All praise to you, Eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to invite you um, to come forward to the water. The ushers will guide you. Come forward to the water as you are able and as you desire. And simply touch the water. Perhaps you'd like to make a cross upon your forehead. And following that, you may pray at the altar amongst the blessing bags. You may take a blessing bag with you. And, or you may pray in your seat. But our message today to ourselves is we remember our baptisms and we are grateful. That is our prayer. Oh Lord, I remember my baptism and I am so grateful for your faithfulness. Amen. Would you come as you're able? We'll bring water to you if you need it at your seat. there 
to cheer you on. You were raised to praise the living Lord, to whom you now belong. If you find someone to share your time, and you join your hearts as one, I'll be there to make your verses rhyme from dusk till rising sun. In the middle ages of your life, not too old, no longer young, I'll be there to guide you through the night, complete what I've begun. When the evening gently closes in, and you shut your weary eyes, I'll be there as I have always been, with just one more surprise I was there to hear your burning cry I'll be there when you are old I rejoiced the day you were baptized to see your life unfold there to hear your burning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoiced the day you were baptized to see your life Let us join our voices together as we rejoice in the faithfulness of our covenant God. We give thanks for all that God has already given us as members of the body of Christ in this congregation, United Methodist Church. We will faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will you stand as able now and let's join our voices in praise. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine.
Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. And this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may go forth this week and forever living in God's grace and the peace of Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen.